Hi guys, after months of anticipation, the Pimax Crystal Super has finally landed and it's a visual powerhouse. In this video, I'll walk you through my first impressions, explore what makes this headset stand out and share where I think VR is heading as we bump up against the limits of brute force rendering. Let's start by taking a closer look at the headset itself. Let's kick off with a tour of the Pimax Crystal Super. This headset is unapologetically bold. It's got the signature wide visor look packed with high-end optics and a specific sheet that reads like a VR enthusiast's wish list. Inside, we've got dual QLED panels with local dimming swappable lenses, and a modular design that screams flexibility. It's built for PC VR and it shows. It is a tad on the heavy side though, and more on that in a moment. The stock audio is decent enough, not as bright as what you expect from DMAS, but solid nonetheless. Unlike the crystal light at birth, sound levels for the Super are very good. Comfort is complicated. The Crystal Super isn't Featherlight, and you feel that during longer sessions. The head strap system is solid with decent adjustability and padding. It's not quite the comfort of other headsets, but it is still a good out of the box solution. Once dialed in, it's surprisingly stable. The weight is reasonably well distributed, albeit slightly front heavy. And the face gasket does a decent job of sealing out external light without pressure points. If you're used to heavier headsets, you'll adapt quickly. If you're coming from something like a G2 or a Quest 2, expect a bit of a neck workout. Now here's where the Crystal Super earns its name. The clarity is phenomenal. We're talking 3840 by 3840, 50 PPD, close to retina resolution per eye, with sharpness that surpasses headsets like the Vario Aero. Text is crisp, distant objects and sim racing are legible, and cockpit details pop like never before. The QLED panels with local dimming deliver deep blacks and vibrant colors, making night racing or dark environments genuinely immersive. It's not just resolution, it's the whole visual package that makes this headset shine. IPD adjustment is motorized and precise, with real-time feedback via eye tracking. You set your range and the headset does the rest. It's slick, accurate, and a huge win for comfort and clarity. Eye tracking also powers dynamic foveated rendering, DFR, which we we'll get to shortly. But even outside of DFR, it helps with auto IPD and future proofing for gaze-based interactions. It's not just a gimmick, it's functional and well integrated. Now let's talk a little bit about performance. The Crystal Super demands serious horsepower. If your GPU isn't up to snuff, you'll hit stutters, frame drops, and general VR jank, especially in sim racing titles. Steam VR doesn't always play nice, and without optimization, the experience can feel like a slideshow. It's frustrating, especially when the visuals are so good. You just want them to run smoothly. Enter dynamic foveated rendering. With eye tracking enabled, DFR intelligently reduces rendering load in your peripheral vision, keeping the center sharp and saving precious GPU cycles. In practice, it's a game changer. Frame pacing improves, stutters reduce, and you get a smoother experience without sacrificing clarity. It's not magic, you still need a beefy GPU, but it's the difference between playable and painful. DFR is especially useful in sim racing, where your gaze is mostly fixed on the track ahead. It's one of the few features that genuinely enhances performance without costing immersion. If the Crystal Super feels like overkill, there are alternatives. The Vario Aero offers decent clarity with a lighter build. The Quest 3 is more affordable and versatile, but can't match the optical fidelity and can sometimes be a pain when coupled with a PC. Then there's the Pimax Crystal Light. Cheaper, lighter, and still impressive, but missing some of the premium features and unfortunately suffering from a few issues. Your choice depends on priorities, clarity, comfort, budget, or standalone use. 
The super has compromises, but they're harder to notice unless you are really looking for them. Mira is a visual artifact that shows up as uneven brightness or subtle blotchiness across the display. It's most noticeable in flat color areas like skies, cockpits, or loading screens, and can look like faint smudges or dirty lens effect. It's not a defect in the headset per se, but rather a limitation in how the panel's pixels and backlighting behave. Think of it like a slightly uneven coat of paint. Most of the time, you won't notice it, but once you do, it's hard to unsee. On the Crystal Super, Mirror is present, and due to the clarity of this headset, it's actually the worst I've seen. You'll likely spot it in the sky or when staring at a uniform background. Is it a deal breaker? Honestly, no. For most users, especially in fast-paced VR scenarios like sim racing, Mira fades into the background. You focus on the track, the instruments, and the action, not the sky texture. But if you're a pixel purist or spend time in slower, more scenic VR experiences, it might be worth considering. Personally, I see it as me wearing a race helmet and the mirror is just a dirty visor. Let's talk numbers. The Crystal Super isn't cheap. At the time of recording, it's hovering around 13 to 1500 pounds, depending on configuration. That's a serious investment, especially when you factor in the GPU you'll need to drive it properly. But for sim racers, flight simmers, and visual purists, it's arguably worth it. You're paying for bleeding edge optics, modular flexibility, and future ready tech. The Pimax Crystal Super is a beast. It's not perfect, comfort takes tuning, performance needs optimization, and the price is steep. But when it works, it delivers one of the most visually stunning VR experiences available today. If you're a sim racing enthusiast with a powerful rig and a hunger for clarity, this headset might just be your new cockpit companion. Just be ready to wrestle with setup and settings to get the best out of it. If you've enjoyed this breakdown, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more deep dives into VR, sim racing and tech. Until next time, keep your eyes on the Apex and may your racing be epic. Bye-bye.